So a case that really sticks in my mind was when I was a registrar in training. As part of our training program, we rotate to trauma centers to really sort of get a handle on how to manage really sick and complex trauma cases. And this case occurred on my very last shift at this quaternary trauma center in Australia. And I was about to start my next rotation as a pediatric registrar when a young lady came in to our fast track minors area with back pain. Um, one of my colleagues had seen her, treated her with, with some simple non and had discharged her on her way. My role that evening was to be running resus, so looking after the sick traumas that were being transferred in by uh, air ambulance and that's been brought in by the micro paramedics. And I was, it was actually pretty peaceful and we had already you know, tried to think about what we're going to be doing on the next shift the next day when the triage alarm buzzer went off. I stayed where I was in recess just to, most of the time, when the alarm goes off at recess, it's nothing really exciting. We used to get, you know, the old heroin drop off and that sort of thing, but that was it. But what came around the corner really surprised me. So one of my colleagues ran around the corner holding a baby. Now, I was working in an adult trauma centre that has absolutely no capacity to manage children, let alone newborn babies. What had happened is the lady who'd come in with back pain was actually having contractions delivered her baby in the toilet and baby had come out blue and my colleague had rushed it around to recess whilst the mother was being put on a trolley and also being rushed around to recess if she had known she was pregnant that would have made life a lot easier for us because we would have thought okay back pain you know crampy pain in a young woman we might have thought these were contractions and dealt with it but she didn't know she was pregnant and was quite surprised when inside of a large bowel motion coming out was a baby when she was pushing. The baby was handed over to me just so my colleague could deal with the mum because they were that's what they're most comfortable with. And so here I am with a, a newborn baby of unknown gestation. It's kind of blue in my arms, not barely breathing with half a pulse. And it's one of the very few times in my life when I've actually done real mouth-to-mouth resuscitation on mm. anyone without anything at all. So, you know, we in our training we get taught how to do bag valve mask ventilation we you know we're using adjuncts we're using face masks and in this case i did there's none of those available because all our neonatal kit was in a cupboard a long way away and barely checked so i did mouth-to-mouth resuscitation carrying this baby into our adult resource bay which was state of the art if you need to do a thoracotomy an amputation chest strain intubate an adult put someone mm-hmm. on ecmo but when you've got a three and a half kilo neonate there is absolutely nothing the room was too cold too bare there was nothing there and you put a coat a neonatal code out in a hospital that only ever looks after adults and people wander down at two o'clock at one o'clock in the morning bewildered because they have no idea what's going on and whether they've got the skill set available and all i could think of my in my head initially is you know i was carrying this baby and doing mouth to is you are not going to die today you are not going to die today. And those were the that was the phrase, the mantra that was going through my head all the time. Mm-hmm. This kid looked completely, you know, looked like it was a term baby, looked otherwise completely fit and healthy. And so as we run through our APLS algorithm and did our airway, our breathing, our circulation, tried to find the kit we needed, then that was going through my head. And part of what really helped me stay in control was just stepping back to the basics of what I knew how to do, how to do ALS and neonatal life support. Tubing babies is a lot easier than tubing most adults because you can pretty much just open their mouth wide and you'll see an airway in front of them. Tube this baby, put them on a monitor, and then we had to figure out exactly how we're going to get IV access when we don't have, have umbilical line kits. So bilateral you know, IOs and fluid boluses and antibiotics and adrenaline and blood, which is really hard to get when you only need, you know, four, five mils mm. per kilo on a three and a half kilo kid. You know, when it, when we call the blood bank and you're asking for just, you know, circulating volume of a newborn is 330 mils, so can of coke. And when you're asking for 100 mils of blood, and they're normally so used to dealing with massive transfusions for these critically unwell kids, it was great that I had an amazing team around me that could make some of these phone calls for me when I was just really just running the code whilst we had the retrieval service on loudspeaker on one phone. And an hour and a half later, this baby is being packaged up in a resuscitator, ready to be taken off to the NICU. Essentially, as far as we know, completely well. You know, semi-smiling despite being tubed and nasogastric down. And, you know, urinary catheter in, bilateral IOs and antibiotics in and transferred out. 
And that is my most memorable and most stressful case ever, dealing with a neonate in a hospital that we didn't know someone was pregnant. And in an adult hospital that is not designed to look mm. after babies. You know, where I work now as a sort of emergency pediatrician, we'll, we'll deliver babies on a regular basis that are in the back of cars, you know, or, uh, or in back of Ubers the, as it is these days. <laughs> yeah. And most of those babies come out, most of those babies come out fit, you know, screaming and well. And if they don't, we've got all the kit ready to go and the team and the midwives and the obstetricians if there are any problems and we've got an on-site NICU. But if you work in a hospital that's not set up for that, you know, you've got that immediate stress of what are you doing in the situation. And then there's the logistics of what are you going to do next? Once you, you know, if you get this, this infant to survive, how are you going to get them from where you are to, you know, five kilometers down the road to the NICU?